Okay, what's going on boys? No guides here. Welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, we got an advanced tutorial on dribbling. A new dribbling style, or not new, but one that I guarantee that you don't use. And it's actually a command that is actually forgotten about. It's not L1 and it's not the R1 button either. Um, but before we get on to that, it's important to understand that there's different left stick dribbling, there's agile, there's all these different ones, shielding technically. Um, I just use left stick, okay? There's a couple of reasons why I do this. Number one is because I don't think agile dribbling should exist in the game, nor should strafe. Um, second of all, it's the most basic thing. And when I play basic football, it's easy for someone to replicate rather than me going like this, and then like this, and then like this, and then it's too much for someone. Even in the elite division, top tier division, 99% of the time, left stick dribbling is being used. Um, and the reason for this is after live tuning update, left stick dribbling is good now. Um, it's not as good as it should be, but you can still maneuver the ball around the goalkeeper. You can still beat a defender. Um, left stick dribbling is very, very good. You just need a good agility and balance. So if you're just in general gameplay and you want the ball is around you and you want to create an opening or you want to fake one way, dummy one way, for all movement, you should always be using the left stick dribble. That is all you realistically need on the advanced level. You can fake one way and then go the other way and then use your body to protect the ball and then go around the goalkeeper. Or if you might see me, I walk into the net a lot of the time. Some of you guys see that. That's how I do that. And if you want to see more uh, videos like that, um, where I go into that in a bit more detail, um, just always check out my Patreon series, patreon.com forward slash nil guys. Link is down below in the description. Um, or you can actually, I believe you can just uh, look at the bottom right corner. So uh, my Patreon is there as well. Um, link it down below. Don't forget, don't, don't forget if you don't get bit after one month, um, I'll refund your money. That is a Neil Guides guarantee. But let's bring on the mark on the screen. That's the Patreon anyway. Um, let's bring on the mark on the screen. So left stick dribble link, normal left stick, simple touches. That's all you need. You can feather or caress with minuscule minute touches. You can do that. I just say forget about it for now. Just completely max it out. If you hear the audible sound, it's completely fine. I've been dribbling the exact same way for like 20 years like this. You don't have to worry about, you know, doing the minuscule touches. Not now anyway, and forget analog sprint. The second one then is the strafe one. Now, this is probably the most important one this year, in my opinion. And the reason why is because you can actually move the ball away consistently. And the reason why is lesser dribbling now with technical dribbling on new gen you have inconsistent touches so what i figured out now is that by tapping the l1 button you can actually get consistent touches with the ball now this is very important because if you're trying to get the ball away from the goalkeeper like this you need to use the l1 button because sometimes technical dribbling you don't know what animation you're going to get but with this one you can kind of sidestep to the player's left or to the player's right you see you get a consistent animation. I can avoid the goalkeeper. Really. Look, I'm using one hand here. I'm just, I'm, but I'm looking at this through OBS. I actually have delay looking at this and I can still use it to maneuver the ball around and you can see I can keep the ball safe. So the L1 strafe one is where you tap it, okay? Just tap it like this. And what you also do inadvertently is that you also trigger players going forward. So if there's someone else, let's say another attacker, well, not only will you be actually taking more consistent touches, you'll be sending another player going forward. So if you struggle with L1 triggers and 1-2s, this could be a solution for you. So um, I would say you can also use the speed boost where you hold the L1 button and then you run into an angle. It's not as prominent. Oh. I was going to, well, maybe not prevalent, that's probably the correct terminology here, as many, as any more, because mainly due to the speed boost being kind of nerfed, and you have to kind of run out of forward angle, you and you can't really run backwards. The only thing I say don't do is don't go backwards with this strafe. I mean, I think this is pointless. If you're going to go backwards, then you use your left analog stick, and then this is where things get complicated now, because when we delve down into this advanced level, there's different dribbles for different things, okay? So general movement, I would say left stick touch away because you see how your body, it protects the ball. So if there's an opponent over there, if you use strafe, it doesn't help you because the ball is still in front of you and you can tackle the ball off you or he or she. Where in contrast, if you take a left stick touch away, your body shields the ball. You see your body, your body's in between the ball um, and the player, so there's a less, so very, very low chance of him getting the ball, especially when you're under constant pressure. The strafe dribbling should be used when you're going forward in diagonal angles or to take more consistent touches away. That is when you can use it. Or if you want on a more advanced level, bring the ball around the goalkeeper like that. 
that is strafe dribbling and then it comes even more complicated we go into agile dribbling now this one you have to be very careful okay now i know all the pro players use it and they use it because left stick dribbling needs to be buffed that's why i don't think r1 should exist because if if left stick dribbling was good you wouldn't need this but this takes touches that are also inconsistent okay because you can't for example tap the, the R1 button like you can for example you can drag the ball away like this okay with the R1 button so you can go backwards um, like that and you can convert then into a left stick touch so that is how the pros use it so although they say use the R1 button they're actually using a combination of multiple they may use strafe and they may use the and they may use the R1 button to bring the ball backwards and then use a left hand to swipe it away so you see how this gets complicated now because then there's different dribblings for different aspects inside the game etc etc if you're inside the box then agile dribbling can be very good if you just want to move the ball in between your feet or if you just want to run around in a circle or do all all sorts of moves then agile dribbling can be useful the thing for me is is that you just don't take a consistent touch that is why the left analog stick is good and then the L1 button, when you tap it, you, you guarantee those consistent touches. If you look over here, I'm going to show you this in third person. This might be a better way of doing this. Have a look at this. You see how the ball, it, 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 it maneuvers between the feet, but you don't get the same animation. Even if I just spam it at the exact same time, at the exact same interval. I'm trying to count here in my head to get it at the exact same interval. You can see you don't get the consistent animation. Like you know, even if I move to the left here and I move to the right, you see how sometimes it pushes the ball further away on a first touch, but sometimes it then keeps the ball on the left hand side of the foot. So imagine this is this is the foot from a bird's eye view, right? Imagine this is the foot. Be careful how I draw this. Imagine this is the foot. So the ball, for example, uh, sometimes you might touch it with the right hand side of your foot where the studs are. Sometimes you might touch it on your left hand side, so you don't get that animation. Sometimes you might get it on the on the on the bottom. I have to be very careful how I draw this, but you kind of get the point that I'm making. So the ball, it, it's it doesn't consistently go in one direction. That's why when players try to use this inside the game, they complain because they say, okay, look, sometimes I do it like this. I can beat the goalkeeper. Wow, that's fantastic. But then when they do it again, but they do it at a certain different angle, and sometimes they don't get the exact movement that they want. They don't get the consistent uh, movement. Then we have the L2 one. So before we get on to the secret one, the L2 one. Now, this one, it's not as good. <clears throat> it should not, I don't even use this at all. It's for very unique situations where someone is very close to you, you can use the L2 button to shield the ball. The problem is, is that you can't see this here, but if there's a player next to you, Mbappe will spin his body around so he's facing this way, and he will use his body or his back to back up into the opponent. So it's kind of like going like this. Imagine that that's the opponent going, he's backing up and you push the ball in front of him. Now, the reason why that's not useful is that he can just run around, okay? So what that does is, okay, it, it puts the man between um, the ball and the player, but then you're leaning back on him. That's the difference. And when you're leaning back on him, you can't get that movement that you want. Now, you can see when you hold that, these people, they try in the arena, they think, oh yeah, it's all fine. Because when your bot, when the player, player model goes next to an AI player, you then change the movement. You, you push your body. You see how Mbappe, you see how his arm, he's like lingering his arm backwards trying to shield the ball. Like almost like he's floating in a swimming pool. Um, so like, you know, it, it doesn't really give you what you actually think you need it for. So it doesn't actually protect the ball, what it does, but not to the extent that you'd want it. So that is why when you're running, let's say, and there's someone like on side or you're trying to jostle for the ball, then okay, you can tap it or hold it. So you see now we have three things. We have four now. Less dribbling for all. We have strafe dribbling for more consistent touches and uh, minute touches because you can see, look, with strafe dribbling, look how, look how close the ball is kept to my feet. With agile dribbling, in contrast, you get the, the quick movements between the feet. But like, you know, the ball is not consistently going in one direction. You hit the ball sometimes close towards you, then you drag it away. Which foot's dragging away? You don't know. You can't push the ball on either side. You know, it's not consistent. So inside the box, you can use and the dribbling. Then you have the slow dribbling, which I'll be honest, um, I used to use this back in FIFA 19. Um, but I used to tap it with the L1 button. Now this dribbling, there's a very, very unique 
use case for this and this is only for those players that are inside the box and you find that the ball is so this is the way it is it's strafe is here agile is here left sticks in the middle okay then jockeying is like i'm not going to put that there and then you have slow dribbling which is like all three of them combined essentially but just slower so you get that small movement but you can sometimes drag the ball away like you would in agile dribbling movement you can also move just how you would in the left down long stick dribbling um, and then you can also sometimes tap it to get that consistent movement but you can see look how the game kind of goes into some kind of frenzy sometimes it kicks the ball away and you kind of get these heavy touches that's where you might have seen the um, you know when people talk about oh you can you know you can turn away really fast and all that palava they talk about you know you can for example go like this uh well whatever it is the exact commands i, I can't remember the exact commands but you know you can for example exit into a very unique angle um yeah you can do that um but you know it's again you have to have that use case as a drag back like that you can do that so even if you think about this speed boost and you try to do it or whatever and to be honest when you try to do it it's inconsistent as well you know you can you got to flick it like you know very very quickly and if you use a drag back you don't get that same thing so do you understand why all these together can just be fixed if less dribbling was much better but this slow dribbling the the unique place i would use it is for example like inside the box if you're trying to shift the ball like this you see that so we're not necessarily using it to beat a play we're just shifting the ball um, or if you want to slow down or you want your opponent to over commit one way um, to be completely honest as you can see with all four or five if you take or six if you take into account like you know the use of skill moves and um and everything like that uh, they all have their own unique um, case now someone's gonna say oh yeah it's good you can use all of them together but historically you never needed it you just needed left and that's where the skill was it was for example knowing when to fake one way and then go the other way so the animation for the goalkeeper moves in is to know when to protect the ball and when is the moment to pull the left analog stick away so the goalkeeper doesn't get it so those are all of them if you want to really experiment left analog stick everywhere on the pitch when you're inside the box you can use agile dribbling to give you that like you know that 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 you know that angle let's say a defender there and he's panicking with a with the running jockey um or if it, most players are normal jockey that's why they that's why they struggle with defending as opposed to running jockey remember i said to you control the speed with the left analog stick and then the slow dribbling it has this unique case which i wouldn't even go i wouldn't even delve into but let's say for example like yeah you're trying to create that angle or something like that and then you have the strafe dribbling, which I think is the most important one. You're trying to keep the ball away or you're trying to move into an angle. You want that consistent touch, but then you got to tap it. So you can see how all these things together, um, they all work in different ways, but they all have um, all different use cases. So in my opinion, if you're watching this, you could try them all out and use them, as I said. Um, but I will be honest, just use a left stick dribbling just keep it simple you know learn the left stick dribble it's it's the most you know this is why i don't use skill moves because you know maybe not what what it once was but all you needed before back in the day was just left stick that's why i don't use skill moves because i tried to replicate you know a fake shot is it really a skill move not really but i tried to use um real life you know I, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be doing ball roll scoops I'm not going to do that. Um, I try to replicate real life football and that is why I prefer to keep it simple. But that's the best way for you to learn. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this video. A bit of a an elaborate one. More that probably added. Hopefully didn't add too much confusion. Uh, but that's just the different dribbling types. Um, and some that you probably didn't even know about. Especially close dribbling. I guarantee like 99% of you guys don't, know, don't even know how to... Um, do it the controls if i said it and to be honest even myself i i you know they changed the from l1 and even i when i looked back at it and i was like oh yeah um even i forgot the controls of it so so something to bear in mind anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching i think we've gone beyond now and um, don't forget you can subscribe to my patreon series patreon.com for slash no guides and if you don't get better after one month i'll refund your mind as of course the no guides guarantee thanks for watching and of course i'll catch you next time peace out